The graphics card market is still reacting to the launch of Nvidia's 40 Super Series cards, and while most of the Super Series cards have replaced their predecessors, the 4080 Super is replacing the 4080, so once 4080s are gone, they're gone. 4070 Ti Super is replacing the 4070 Ti, so once the Ti's are gone, they're gone. But the 4070 Super, while offering the largest performance bump over its non-Super predecessor, isn't actually replacing its predecessor. The 4070 is staying in the market and it's officially had its MSRP cut to $550, but has been available below that. Now, this has put pressure on AMD's pricing as well, and we've seen AMD react with the 7800 XT coming back down to at or below its MSRP of $500. It had been selling for above that for a while, and now it's hitting that price point more frequently and even dipping below it, and AMD's 7900 XT, the next step up, a step up in their product stack, is now widely available at $700. And then, by the way, I know a lot of people talk about you know global market and things like that, and I, I understand I'm, I'm referencing US pricing, and that's actually one of the big things in this video, because in the US, AMD is missing part of its lineup. And according to what I just saw today, that may not be the case for much longer. We might be seeing AMD actually placing something in between the 7800 XT, which complete, uh, competes with the 4070, and the 7900 XT, which is kind of in an awkward spot competing with the 4070 Ti, which is getting phased out. Uh, it still competes fairly well with the 4070 Ti Super, but it no longer has as meaningful of a VRAM advantage. So then Nvidia's feature set starts to become pretty relevant there. Although, you know, they've knocked down the price $100, so it's kind of in between. So with the 7900 XT sitting at $700 and you have the 7800 XT getting pushed down to 500 or below, you've got this massive $200 uh, price span in between them, and sitting between them right now is the 4070 Super, which like I said, has had the largest performance bump from uh, the Super lineup compared to its predecessors. Now it still has 12 gigabytes of VRAM, and for some people that is going to be a concern if you hang on to your GPU for a long time. You know, more VRAM generally pays off in the long run. But the point is, what does AMD have right now to compete with that? And in some markets, they have the 7900 GRE, but that has not been the case in the United States. So uh, I saw an article today that really grabbed my attention. This is probably gonna flashbang you. Uh, so I saw this headline, AMD 7900 GRE coming to US with big price cut. So I was very curious if there's actually anything to this. Because the 7900 GRE, the Golden Rabbit Edition, for those of you unaware, so there's three different 7900s. There's the XTX, their highest end model, which has similar rasterized performance to the 4080 and 4080 Super, uh, but you know, weaker in ray tracing, and, and a th $1,000 MSRP available around $920 currently. Uh, then you have the 7900 XT, it loses an X as well as a bunch of performance. And like I said, that's currently positioned at about $700. But uh, in China, a while back, they launched the Golden Rabbit Edition. And then elsewhere in the world, it was available as a system integrator part, meaning that you could buy a pre-built system with one in it, but you couldn't just buy the 7900 GRE in a box off the shelf. However, that started to become more available uh, in European markets, but definitely not in the United States. I've been interested in getting my hands on one to test, uh, but it just hasn't been a thing. So obviously this has grabbed my attention, but I was curious, where is Forbes getting this from? Now they link a couple of sources in the video, uh, I mean, in their, uh, in their article, and I will link my sources in the video description. Uh, but it seems to be pulling from this videocards.com article for the most part. And as far as the US launch, it mostly comes down to th uh, th uh, th this line right up here. Uh, so videocards.com is specifically stating, we have recently learned that large US retailers are also working on selling the Radeon RX 7900 GRE. The information we've gathered so far suggests that the Gigabyte RX 7900 GRE model, which they had an article about uh, a day or two ago, uh, right here, uh, mentioning that the 7900 GRE from Gigabyte was becoming available, 
Um, anyway, uh, so they were talking about that. And so they're saying that as they followed up asking about that basically with retailers, it's expected to hit the US market later this month. And I mean, I don't know when you're watching this video right now, it's February. So, so they're expecting it later in February. Well, we're already on the 18th of February. So that would be fairly soon if it's gonna happen this month. And they're saying it's worth adding that along with the price update for the RX 7900 XT, where again, uh, they're widely available around $700 right now, although AMD had um, seemed to officially indicate they were targeting more of a 749 price point on it, but the actual market has seen more like 700. And even the occasional discount that I've reported on down to, uh, down to 670 with an extra uh, coupon code from Amazon. Anyway, uh, so they're saying AMD announced that the RX 7900 GRE will also be available at a lower price of $549, effectively a $100 price cut from where it was initially listed. They also have these specs up against the 7900 XT and the 7800 XT, which would be the, uh, you know, above it and below it in their lineup. So basically, um, what we're looking at here is spec wise from compute units, it's way closer to a 7900 XT than it is to a 7800 XT, but in the price point, 549 versus 499. Now that would be really interesting because again, officially Nvidia has a $50 price, uh, uh, price gap on MSRP between their 4070 at 549 and their 4070 Super at 599, although again, it has kind of pushed down the 4070 non-super a little bit beyond that. Um, so, uh, so if this is true, then this is basically, we're looking at a, uh, a direct MSRP price competitor to the 4070 non-super, although uh, maybe in the actual market, could that push things a little bit farther? But what is the actual performance like though? Because the other big difference here is that the memory system is more similar to the 7800 XT because we are on a 256-bit bus, uh, like the 7800 XT, and actually the memory speed is listed at 18 gigabits per second, which is slower than the 19.5 on the 7800 XT and the 20 on the 7900 XT. So it actually has a slower memory system and effectively lower memory bandwidth than a 7800 XT, and significantly lower memory bandwidth than the 7900 XT, um, also its power consumption is listed at 260 watts for the board power, which is basically a tie with the 7800 XT. So it's interesting in that its compute units would put it as more like a 7900 XT class card, but its uh, power consumption and memory system puts it more as like a 7800 XT. So uh, I hadn't paid a lot of attention to these in terms of their actual performance metrics because they just were not widely available and especially not in the US, which is where I am and what I primarily cover. So with that in mind, I've looked up, are there any big reputable reviews of the 7900 GRE? And I was especially curious if they had it up against cards like the 4070 and the 7800 XT. The problem is the 7900 GRE, um, again, wasn't widely available and it hasn't been you know, sampled out to reviewers. There's not a lot of reviews on them. And also, um, there's, uh, you know, when the reviews were done, we didn't have a 7800 XT yet. This was a, uh, officially came available before the 7800 XT. But I've been able to find this from Computer Base and this from TechSpot. I believe this TechSpot review uses the same kind of review data, I think, from the Hardware Unboxed YouTube channel. I think there's a, a partnership that happens there with TechSpot for the written articles. Anyway, so if we look at both of these, I'm seeing similar placement for the performance. Um, uh, on both review outlets. So I went ahead and while they're reviewing different games, I looked at the percentage difference when compared to the 4070. Again, the 4070 Super wasn't out at the time of these reviews. And it's looking like the 7900 GRE in computer bases testing was about 10% faster than the 4070. And if I look at the TechSpot review, uh, we're seeing 11% faster than the 4070. And again, different set of games, uh, it easily introduces a 1% margin of error or uh, you know different cooler model, whatever. So the point is we're seeing about 10, 10 or 11% faster than the 4070, which I would actually take as pretty disappointing given what the specs show. And also if you compare the 7900 GRE to the 7900 XT, now, now the direction I'm counting these percentages in is a performance uplift. So I'm doing the 78, 7900 XT 
divided by the 7900 GRE to show if the 7900 GRE was set as 100% baseline, the 7900 XT performance here would be 123%. So it's a 23% performance uplift from the 7900 GRE. Um, now that's kind of disappointing because if we uh, uh, again look at uh, more of just kind of a general uh, general sort of ranking, like a, a 7900 XT, if we look at um, uh, tech uh, tech power ups, kind of general performance metrics, the 7900 XT is, um, you know, uh, if we compare it to like a 7800 XT. So if I if I click on the 7800 XT, the 7900 XT is listed as about 30% faster. So in other words we're seeing this as it's definitely closer to a 7800 XT than it seems to be to a 7900 XT. So the performance here, um, if we look at these specs, it seems like while the memory system and power consumption are lined up closer to the 7800 XT, that also seems to be what we would expect from the performance. So uh, at first I was quite excited about this, but when I'm actually looking at those performance metrics from its original launch, I'm less excited about it. I'm curious what you guys think, because if this ends up only being, you know, within 5% or so performance of a 7800 XT with the same amount of VRAM and power draw, you know, is that really that exciting? I mean, it adds something else to their lineup. Um, it would be interesting to see if maybe somehow since driver updates, since its initial launch or something like that, if things have changed. So I am certainly interested in eventually getting my hands on one of these and testing them, especially if they are actually coming to the US as videocards.com is suggesting here. Uh, that's certainly very interesting. But right now, if it did a better job of splitting the difference between a 7800 XT and a 7900 XT, if it was actually in between their performance evenly, and came in uh, you know, closer to the 7800 XT in pricing. That, I think, would be exciting. But unfortunately, that just doesn't seem to be the case. Although, I, last thought here is I'm curious uh, how much overclocking headroom these things have. Because if they're powered closer to a 7800 XT, but have the compute units closer to a 7900 XT, I'm curious what would happen if you fed it some more power, how, um, what, what kind of overclocking potential these might have, uh, just out of curiosity. But anyway, what do you guys think about this um, move from AMD? I mean, in general, having more options in the lineup is a good thing. And one of my main uh, things I like about AMD is they seem willing to adjust GPU pricing to what the market will bear. So, um, you know, having more things in their stack and then the price is shifting around with the market and what people will pay, I think could, could like I said, uh, only be a good thing. But in general, I, yeah, I was a little disappointed by the reviews that I'm seeing uh, here so far. And I'm, I'm anxious to get my hands on one myself. Um, because again, uh, the seven, just for one last kind of reference point, the 7800 XT, um, in TechSpot's most recent testing is about 6% faster on average than the 4070. So if we compare it like this, then the, and the 7900 GRE is 11% faster than the 4070. Again, that doesn't leave a lot of room there for the, um, uh, you know, the gap between the 7900 GRE and the 7800 XT. It certainly seems like it would be faster, but not by a whole heck of a lot. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Huge thank you to viewers, commenters, subscribers, and especially channel members who have clicked the join button to fund the channel directly. Uh, that is absolutely amazing that you guys are willing to do that. Uh, huge thank you. Totally understand not everybody's in a financial position to do that. And I hope absolutely everyone has an excellent day.